Good morning and welcome to Good Shepherd Lutheran Church. It is the sixth Sunday after Pentecost, July 12, 2020. And our reading this morning on which pastor is based his sermon is the epistle lesson found in Romans chapter eight, starting with verse 12. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it is not to the flesh to live according to it. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. For those who are led by the spirit of God are the children of God. The spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our song this morning is 10,000 Reasons, Bless the Lord, by Matt Redman. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I worship your holy name. sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I worship your holy name. in love and you're slow to anger your name is great and your heart is kind for all your goodness I will keep on singing ten thousand reasons for my heart to strength is failing the end draws near and my time has come still my soul will sing your praise unending ten thousand years and then forever more bless the Oh 
worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship Your holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Thank you, Ken McManus and Bob Sisko, for the reading and for the song, 10,000 Reasons. What kind of fears do you experience? The sermon title today is, So That You Do Not Live in Fear. The text was read earlier from the New International Version. Now here it is from the New King James Version. Romans 8, verses 14 and 15. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption, by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. Here ends the text. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you, from the God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. St. Paul refers to fear. It's uncomfortable to be afraid, even to think about our fears. Maybe you're someone who says, I'm not a fearful person. I'm not afraid of anything. In an attempt to manage our fears, we either deny our feelings or call them something else. Anxiety, concerns, worry, just thinking about something, but they are still there. Our fears have an impact on our actions and on our inaction. Doctors have identified over 700 kinds of phobias or fears. For example, <clears throat> claustrophobia, the fear of enclosed places, agoraphobia, fear of open spaces or situations that might make a person feel trapped, helpless, or embarrassed. Some current trending phobias related to coronavirus are demophobia, the fear of crowds, autophobia or monophobia, the fear of being alone, and maskophobia, the fear of masks. There is an annual Chapman University Survey of American Fears. It provides a look into the concerns of average Americans. The top fears last year in 2019 included fears about the outcome of the 2020 election, random mass shootings and biological warfare, corrupt government officials and abuse of power, and fear of ethnic and religious groups other than one's own. That was a couple of last year's fears. And then there is this year, 2020. The Atlantic, the 162 year old publisher on May 14, 2020, released an article entitled, We're All Afraid Just of Different Things. In the article, Edwin Leap wrote, as South Carolina started to open back up, one thing seems to unite us all, fear. Physicians are afraid, hairdressers are afraid, teachers and students are afraid, but not everyone is afraid of the same thing. Edwin Leap gave some examples, including Sarah Ferris, an emergency physician 
who fears the devastation she is seeing in her patients as a result of COVID-19. And other doctors who are worried about patients who do not have the coronavirus, but out of fear of catching coronavirus, are ignoring various symptoms and canceling doctor's appointments. Edwin Leap continued, other health care professionals are fearful of losing work. Small businesses and laid off employees fear permanent closings. Lisa, a bookkeeper for a grocery store said, I was afraid people would be violent if they didn't get the groceries that they wanted and needed. So she continues to work. She added that her husband is scared of losing her because she is working. You would think that fears are bad. However, fears are not all bad. They are constructive when they work functionally. Fears warn us and encourage us to be careful and to avoid danger. Fears motivate us to help and protect others who are in danger. But fears also may be dysfunctional and even destructive. Fears can trap a person, produce panic, move people to make stupid decisions, or cause a person to say or do things harmful to themselves or others. Dysfunctional fears may be deceptive. A person's fear may lead to a misjudged perception about protecting themselves or others from something that is not dangerous. A dysfunctional fear can lead to someone shouting the word fire inside a crowded building when there is smoke from an outside source that is not in any way threatening the building. The shout fire causes a deadly pileup of people at an exit. Another example of a destructive fear is denial of real danger and then communicating to others that all is well, even though it is not. Dysfunctional fear does not usually produce a safe result. Some fears are rational and understandable, while others are not. When circumstances become chaotic and confused, as happens during a pandemic, it becomes difficult to sort things out. What is a valid fear and what is real safety becomes muddled. In confused situations, different people come to different conclusions as to what is safe. How do you respond when you have fear? As we reread our Romans 8 epistle reading for this week, St. Paul compares the fears of people that do not fully trust God, he compares them to bondage. Fears can hinder and restrict the untrusting. St. Paul offers a suggestion for believers in Christ to help them manage their fears. The New King James translation says in verses 14 and 15, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. St. Paul advocates faith in the leading of God's Spirit, so that you do not live in fear. Faith in the Spirit means following God's lead. It is living, being focused on serving Christ, as opposed to being focused on something else like our fears. When the Israelites were freed from Egypt and were wandering in the scary big wilderness, God went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead them on their way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light that they might go by day and by night. That was in Exodus 13, verse 21. And today, the light of his spirit still leads. Only now, it is through his words in the Bible which produce faith and trust in God and enable us to follow him. We can follow the Lord as he guides and as he moves us away from dark and sinful ways of seeing life. Through faith, we are no longer limited to perceiving life as being only about this world's troubles and about ourselves. 
The Lord guides us safely beyond fear towards the dawn of a new eternal day. Christ's suffering and death and resurrection introduced this new reality. We need no longer to be trapped by our fears about what might happen because God leads us through and past what we fear. With refreshed faith, we can cope functionally and safely in, this, in the troubles of this world. St. Paul began this chapter 8 with the source of blessing that we receive through Christ. The message paraphrase says it this way, With the arrival of Jesus, the Messiah, those who enter into Christ being here for us no longer have to live under a continuous, low-lying black cloud. God went for the jugular when he sent his own son. He personally took on the human condition, entered the disordered mess of struggling humanity in order to set it right once and for all. Then, as he continued in verse 2, St. Paul acknowledged that the source of the fears and confusion we have in this world was addressed. Again, from the message paraphrase, the spirit of life in Christ, like a strong wind, has magnificently cleared the air, freeing you from a faded lifetime of brutal tyranny at the hands of sin and death. The first part of our text today, verse 15, is this, for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. And the rest of the verse is, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. God's spirit is with us since we are his now. He has adopted us and we can call him Abba, Father. In conclusion, for months now, we have been flooded with fearful news. A few of the topics heard include COVID-19 pandemic, racism and prejudice, protesting and police problems, polarized opinions, identity politics with each side stirring up fears of the other side, increasing social problems, and still no answers for drugs and gangs, crime, and mass incarceration, struggling schools, businesses, and domestic problems. That list could go on and add international conflict and unrest and many other things. Into this disturbed world, Christ came so that you do not have to live in fear. Through Christ, we have been chosen and adopted by God to be freed from being trapped by our fears. Adoption by Christ is a legal and binding break from former sinful attachments, emotions, and relationships. Adoption into Christ and God's family means that we are part of God's family and we do not have to be controlled by the anxieties and fears that are part of life without God. We have been freed from bondage to fear and adopted by God to live a new life of faith so that we do not have to live in fear. Trust our God who is love, our Abba. Amen. And now may the peace of God keep your hearts and minds in faith in Christ Jesus. Amen.